hello everyone welcome to my channel in this video we are going to talk about disseminated intravascular coagulation well uh, as a gynecologist we people just tend to forget what are the processes of coagulation and that's why when when this term comes to us like DIC then we are just you know scratching our mind that what was that so let's talk about that right so uh, let's talk about the pathology first there are two processes that are going simultaneously in our body all the time and that is called coagulation as well as anticoagulation both of these processes are going simultaneously inside our body and they have a fine balance right so balance should be needed now what happens in the coagulation finally all coagulation factors and pathway finally make a thrombin and the thrombin will convert the fibrinogen into fibrin those fibrin are this fibrin are fiber like structures and they hold all the platelets and make a clot right so coagulation means fibrinogen to fibrin by the activation of prothrombin right now what is anticoagulation in the anticoagulation all the fibrin strains are degraded or cut by the plasmin and converted into FTP that is fibrin degradation products so these two basic processes are going on simultaneously all the time now when the balance is gone severely off the line both the processes get interrupted right like one process increases so much let's say coagulation when the coagulation is so much high all the coagulation factors will be then utilized right when there is a, such a higher amount of coagulation is going on lot of small clots will be formed and they will do what they will occlude the small arteries and arterioles all around the body and they will cause vascular insufficiencies in many organs important organs like heart brain lung liver kidney like that and they will cause organ failure right so such a high uh, coagulation is going on and see coagulation is a is a purchasing uh, purchasing process that means if you want a coagulation you need to have certain coagulation factor with you right and the liver your liver makes those coagulation factors once all the coagulation factors get utilized then you lose your ability for coagulation and what will be there after then after it will be no coagulation at all and it, that will be bleeding uh, there will be bleeding tendency all around the body so you you see one process has just disrupted the other one also so you will get bleeding all the way like hematuria hemoptysis bloody stools everywhere right so it starts with higher amount of or extremely coagulation and then comes the anticoagulation right and these all uh, problems called dic disseminated intravascular coagulation now what are the causes of dic wherever there is a massive tissue injury like in trauma burns hyperthermia dic can happen if there are widespread infection like toxic shock syndrome and all these things like bacterial viral fungal in that diseases also you all you might get dic third one which is important for us is pregnancy related because pregnancy is already a hypercoagulable state right and when this kind of processes go uh, worsen like abruptio placenta preeclampsia eclampsia amniotic fluid embolism long iufd severe pph all these processes will lead to what dic 
further problems in the coagulation system. If you have a mismatch transfusion, allergic reaction, even hemangioma, all these processes can cause DIC. Right now, I am not going into the pathology of uh, uh, coagulation pathway in much detail, but just I will tell you how it happens. Okay, now you know that to have a coagulation, you need to convert this fibrinogen into fibrin. This is a first step fibrinogen to fibrin. This is obviously this is not a first step, but the important step is what fibrinogen to fibrin. Right now, what uh, what substance will drive this process and this will be thrombin thrombin will do what it will convert into fibrinogen into fibrin now to convert this uh, process the thrombin itself get it itself must be get activated so it is a activation cascade one factor activates another another factor reactivates another Right. So, there are two pathways, intrinsic and extrinsic. In extrinsic pathway, the factor 7 will be there, tissue factor will be there. And in the intrinsic pathway, the factor 12, 11, 9, all will be there. Right. All of this pathway will convert or converge at the common pathway. Intrinsic and extrinsic pathway will converge at common pathway and activate what? Thrombin. So activated thrombin will do what will convert fibrinogen into fibrins. That's it. Now, and this fibrin can again uh, degraded by the plasminogen, which is a inactive form of plasmin. Fibrin degrading products. Right now, I am not going to going to uh, in detail what is PT, APTT, INR in this video because this video is particularly for DIC. I am also posting another video in which you will get the whole uh, whole uh, you know information about PT, APTT, and INR that is international normalization ratio. So I am just skipping this part for this video. Right now. PT measures what? PT measures extrinsic and common pathway. APTT measures what? Intrinsic and common pathway. When there is a decreased in all coagulation factors or the all coagulation factors have been purchased or uh, sold then which is happening in the DIC at that time in the DIC, you will find that both APTT and PT will be on higher side, right? During DIC, fibrinolytic activity is also increased along with the coagulation. So the fibrin degrading products, FDP, will be also raised. Fibrinogen level might decrease. You can see on the blood picture, on the peripheral smear, that is kistocyte. They are basically broken RBCs, right? Now, what is the treatment of DIC? DIC is a severe emergency and it should be managed in the ICU only, right? And hematologists and medicine people should be included or involved. Uh, the treatment certainly uh, uh, remains to uh, replenish all the factors, right? So, where, where you will get those factors? You will get those factors into fresh, fresh frozen plasma, right? Cryopreservatives and PRP, platelet rich plasma. All these uh, blood products you have to give and in a titration dose definitely so that uh, you can prevent further problems in the DIC. But again, DIC remains a serious problem, right? Thank you, friends.